Alright, to you then, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to part two of Let's Play Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets for the PlayStation 1. And I finally managed to get past the gnoming section, after a countless amount of tries. Now, the wasp hive was easy to hit, but it's the phone box that got me. But, uh, yeah, so I managed to do it. Don't worry. I've got the famous Witches and Wizards card now. Finally. But you know what? That was really good fun. Actually, in in this uh, in the first I remember in the first um <coughs> in the first part of this let's play I forgot to show off the folio mage and you know what that's probably what I'm gonna do after we've had this next wizard jewel. So yeah. Oops, but what's coming up next? Hello there. Fancy a wizard jewel? A wizard jewel? Don't tell me you've never taken part in a wizard jewel. You've got a lot to learn, Harry. Is this safe? Of course it's safe. Uh, well, mostly. <sighs> that gives me a bad feeling about this. Okay. Right. So, yes, next up we're going to do a little bit of dueling, which is going to be play a big part later on in this game. Alright, to you then. Yep, the Burrow Dueling Arena. I mean, it doesn't matter if you do 100% this game your first try, because when you're done with the game, unlike Ch unlike Philosopher's Stone, you can actually go back and look at the levels and do the levels that with with wizard cards that you haven't okay. already done. Dueling is really simple. But yeah. All you have to do is try and hit your opponent with the knockback jinx. Every time you hit your opponent, you get closer to disarming him. And don't forget. Fully charged knockback jinxes can be cast by holding the X button down and then releasing it. But don't worry, Harry. Fred will go easy on you this time. Okay? Let's All right. Do. Get ready. So basically, here we're, we're just learning the uh, basics of the dueling. Basically, what you have to do, just keep casting jinx, knockback jinxes at Fred. Of course, if you catch the fully charged one, nice his health meter will go down. He's doing really down. Well. His his health bar will go down faster. So yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Ow. But yeah, Ow. I mean, I recommend casting fully charged one. Nice I mean, when it gets to like his very last bit of health, it doesn't matter if it's fully charged or not. Well you saw done, there. Harry. You won the first round. So yeah. I mean, I don't think you get a wizard card or anything for this, but I, I, just in case you know what, you know, it's it's really good for you. I mean, you, you know, this is just for practice. I don't believe you have to win this or anything, but because, um, you know, I've been playing this game for 10 years, uh, uh, 10, maybe 11 years, um, I know what to do, so, yeah. Alright then. Uh, you're going down, Fred. And to finish off. Which is just the same as for Panda. In this game, at least. Well done, Harry. Now let's try again. But this time we'll introduce some special jinxes. Good idea, Fred. See that TV? See the way it's sparkling? That means it's got a special jinx in it. To get the special jinx, you have to force me to hit the TV with one of my jinxes. That will release an orb that you can run over and pick up. Anything that sparkles like the TV has got a special jinx in it. So remember to look out for the sparkles. Oh, I nearly forgot. Special jinxes can only be cast using the circle button. That's important. Come on, let's give it a All try. Alright, sorry about that. It's blooming us now. I got really bad hair fever this morning, which sucks donkey balls, but... Yeah, anyway, so, time to show off the special jinxes. Basically, what I'd recommend doing, take cover behind the TV, and you'll hit it. one of those blue orbs will pop out, and it'll select a special jinx at uh, random, and you'll 
be able to press a circle button to cast it, so yeah. However, be careful, you know, not to uh, not to cast at the la at the post on on Fred's end because that'll that'll mean he'll get a special jinx as well. But yeah, I mean, some special jinxes are more powerful than others. As you saw there, that green one was really, really powerful. In fact, he got in down to his last bit of health. Whereas the first special Get jinx, ready. the yellow one, was just basically the standard Joe. knockback jinx, really. Which is easily the worst of the of all the special jinxes. Okay, okay, this is a pretty awesome one, because it gets him by surprise. Ow, great work Again, there. it's... I mean, yeah, it's not... It doesn't really take down much of his health bar, but it's still pretty cool, so... Yeah. Ah, We've got another one of these. I mean, I usually... I mean, most of the time I do end up getting him a special jinx, but it, it's no big deal. Alright, this is one of my favourites. Three jinxes at the same time, you can't beat that one. But yeah, I believe there are... I believe those are all the special jinxes. I believe there's four of them. But we'll find out later if uh, there are wow, look at that. any special jinxes natural, that Harry. I didn't show off there. So, yeah. All right, T.O. then. Now we're going to finish off the burrow section here with a um bit of a... Uh, bit of a, our first... I guess you could call our first proper mission section of the game because all the rest has been tutorials with the exception of no my no no gnoming oh by the way oh skip some of the dialogue there if you come across that's my fault sorry use your knockback jinx or you'll win guardian leviosa to defend yourself sorry i bet i skipped a bit of ron's dialogue there chocolate frogs will help replenish your energy keep an eye out for them right let's split up I'll go this way. See you soon, Harry, and good luck. But yes, uh, chocolate frogs make a return this game. Now, if we follow Ron, we're going. We're gonna go around the circle, but it's not, it doesn't matter because we get a few beans and also a chocolate frog here. So yeah. All right. Now these lawn mowers. Now, you can either defeat him with two normal knockback jinxes or, or one fully charged one, like I'll show you later. I think it's the next one. And watch out for the bees here because, well, they're obvi they, obviously they can harm you, as you would imagine. Um, yeah, there's just a chocolate pond in there. We don't need that. But always be sure to check the barrels for beans, just in case. Just in case. Alright, now here, like in the first game, we can actually use the R1 button to target this washing machine right here. Obviously, the fully charged knockback jinx will do more damage, or will it? No, I think um, a normal knockback jinx does the same amount of damage as a fully charged one, so it doesn't matter, I don't think. And basically, we need to use this uh, washing machine to get up there. There we are. Then we need to cast at it again. Uh, Levitate it up. What? And there we are. So, yeah, basically, we're going to. Uh, Climb up here and get these beans and the chocolate frog, and which is the first one we'll actually need. So, yeah. But yeah, this this first kind of mission section area is packed with chocolate frogs. You know, it's full of them. So, yeah. But yeah, as you can saw, as you saw there, you can also defeat the lawnmowers with one fully charged not bad jinx. You don't have to do two not regular ones. So, yeah. But it's up to you. I mean. You can defeat him in your own way. You can use two normal knockback jinxes or you can use one fully charged way. It really doesn't matter. Just as long as you get him defeated, so yeah. Chocolate 
Rock. Don't need. And that's Harry's way of whispering in this game. I'm surprised no one hears it, as we're going to see later on. Alright, deal then. And I've got a moth in my room. I just killed one in the bathroom, now I have to kill another one after I finish recording this. <coughs> I mean, when when you kill these lawnmowers, be sure not to get too close to them because that'll kill you as well. So. Yeah. Wingardium Leviosa. Uh, drop. Okay, this moth is getting annoying. Alright, you know what? Nah, never mind. Um, but yes, yeah, so uh, just dropped a load of beans for us there. So obviously, we're naturally gonna want to get these for something later on. So yeah. And um, we need 50 beans for one famous Witch of the Wizard cards at Hogwarts. So, uh, um, we, are, we have enough for one now, and there's five to get. Usually I can get five hundred. Usually I can get um, two hundred and fifty, which is enough for five, I believe. Before the before Hogwarts, uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. So, yeah. Oh, that's just true. Sorry, never mind. But yeah, as you like I said before, as you can see, packed with chocolate frogs, so don't worry about dying. Unless I really, really crapped this game. Like I was now a kid. Wingardium Leviosa! I'd like to you then. Get that onto that pressure pad. And here we have a crap load of beans to get because we've got a crap load of barrels to break. So, yeah. I mean, seriously, if, if you're low on beans, this is your chance to redeem yourself, man. I mean, you can't possibly miss these if you're going for them. In fact, you know what? I might as well say you can't possibly not beat this game unless you're really, really young like I was. Because this game is, I believe, it's it, this, I, I mean, I at least find this game a lot easier than the Philosopher's Stone game. But maybe that's because I grew up with it. But honestly, I think that it is easier because, um, you know, you don't have to do as much. You, most of the things, most of the stuff in this game requires the same thing. And I believe the barrel in the middle can change the chocolate frog. Yep. Alright. Yeah, I'm getting more into the swing of things with the commentary now, because, you know, in part one, I wasn't really in, in the mood for commentary, I guess you could say. But in part two, as you can hear, I, I do actually sound a lot more talkative and lively, which... You know what? I like being talked to in my way. So, yeah. And for some reason, the music stops here. I don't know why. It's not, you know, a problem with the game. It's just something that's always happened ever since I got the game when I was, young, when I was younger. So, yeah. Right here, then. Let's go on, then. I mean, there is like, um, one thing I forgot to mention, like the Philosopher's Stone game, there are some f hidden famous Witches and Wizards cards in certain missions, and there's one here, so, uh, yeah. I mean, it's not until the next, the very last section that we're going to get to the next, but it is here. So, what we're going to do here is obviously take the washing machine. 
if my mum just got back from my dog. Actually, no, that might be just the build, the workers, the builders, so, yeah. And that's going to bring down, like, once again, a crap ton of, ton of beans. You see, this is why it is so easy to get enough, to get loads of beans before you even go to Hogwarts, so, yeah. Just gonna get all these, and we we're on eighty eight beans already. That that is a lot, especially since we haven't even got to Hogwarts yet. Jesus Christ! But yeah, so obviously we're gonna go on here. Oh, lawnmower! Hello. Another bean for us to collect. Oh, I believe we're on to the very last section here, actually. Yep, we are. And I believe that's why the music has stopped, because... Here... Oh, I don't know why the music has stopped, but here... This is a section where... There is um, a famous Witch and Wizards card. card. But yeah, move those crates forward. Jump on here, we get four beans in the famous, which is the wizard's card. Hengist of Woodcroft. Okay, so yeah, okay, I'm gonna show off the folio mage I know. Felix Summerby, inventor of cheering charms. Yeah, I'm going to uh show off each of these cards. Yardley Platt. Serial Goblin Killer. Okay, not very nice. Hengist of Woodcroft. Founded the village of Hogsmeade. Okay. Back to you then. Let's carry on then. Yeah, we're showing off the Folio Magi now. You can also, while you're Hengist Folio Magi, you can Founded press the, the square button to go to the, your port card, which basically... It tells you what you've done and what you haven't done, and obviously I haven't done any of these yet, so let's go. Basically, I believe the report card is needed to 100% the game, so yeah. Sorry about that, guys, I just had to blow my nose there. Once again, I have horrible, horrible hair fever. But, uh, yes. You came. My puffs game swallowed my remember. Actually, no. What? Trying to find him. That's what she I said. <laughs> Thank goodness you came. That's what she do. said. You can have it, Harry. I don't have my wand on me now, so use your knockback jinx in the puffs game, and he'll stretch uh, it out. You know what? You know you will be saying that's what she said things in four years. So, yeah. Okay, there we are. I don't know why two versions of the music track are playing that over each other, Harry. but yeah. Hope Dad's junk wasn't too much of a problem for you. Right. We better get back to the house. Mum and Dad are waiting to take us to okay. the Alley. So for the second time, we get to say, Welcome Harry to Diagon Alley. <laughs> I don't know why, I just love that game from sorry, that line from the first uh, film. Um from the Philosopher's Stone movie when Hagrid says to Harry, Welcome Harry to Diagon Alley. As you've never travelled by flu something by about that line. You need to know it. When you're in the fireplace, say where you're going. And keep your My control just in. fell to the floor. Why'd you get out at the right fireplace? Are no, you but, sure yeah. this is safe? Piece of cake. Diagon <coughs> Alley. Okay. All right, this section. This can be very frustrating. Now, it's not so bad here, but later on. Okay, I say it's not so bad here. <laughs> but yeah. All right, so this section. It can be a pain in the butt. 
I mean, you can press the X button to slide faster, but why would you want to do that? I'd recommend taking your time with this because it's so freaking hard. So, yeah. Basically, you ought to, I would obviously recommend collecting beans along the way, but if you're not bothered, I would just ignore the beans and bother about and only worry about your balance. And yeah, especially that part, that part right there gets me all the time. It doesn't matter how many times I play the game, that part always seems to screw me over whenever you have to focus on your turn. I just recommend holding right there, right on the left analog stick or directional buttons, whatever you're using. So yeah. Right. Uh, oh, right, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, I don't know why, but for some reason... You know what? I'd say that part relies on luck. Purely on luck. Because it's physically impossible to do yourself, so... Yeah. To, it's physically impossible to ensure that you're safe there, so yeah. Although, I will say this. I've not had this much trouble. or I haven't had quite this much trouble on that part before, so yeah. Right, come on, do it, do it, do it, do it. Yeah, that was close. That was really, really close. Oh my god. Yeah, this. Okay. Now, this part's bit pretty straightforward. You just gotta ignore the. Sorry, avoid the flames there. I mean, you do get hit, but it, I don't believe they. I believe they don't do much damage to you, sir. So yeah. Alright, to you then. And in the PS1 version, originally, you know, if you're playing on the PS1 or PS2, the picture's better there, but on the PS2, it's just the green screen. Harry had no idea where he was. All he could tell was that he wasn't in Diagon Alley. Evil-looking masks stared down from the wall, and rusty, spiked instruments hung from the ceiling. The sooner I get out, the sooner I get out of here, the better. Harry heard a noise from the door nearby, and two blurry shapes appeared on the other side of the glass. Harry looked quickly around and spotted a large black cabinet. He shot inside it and pulled the doors closed, leaving a small crack to peer through. Seconds later, a bell clanged, and Draco Malfoy stepped into the shop. The man who was with Draco could only be his father, Lucius Malfoy. Touch nothing, Draco. Mr. Malfoy was trying to sell the shopkeeper certain dark magical items that he didn't want the Ministry of Magic to find out about. Harry went to Flourish and Blots to buy his books. While he was in there, Gilderoy Lockhart, Hogwarts' new Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, was signing his latest book. Nice big smile, Harry. Together you and I were at the front page. Harry met up with Ron and Ginny Weasley. Lucius and Draco Malfoy were also there. Famous Harry Potter. Can't even go into a bookshop without making the front page. Ginny, who was very fond of Harry, defended him. Leave him alone. He didn't want all that. Lucius Malfoy insulted the scruffy state of the second-hand books Ginny had bought. I suppose those books are the best your father can give you. Lucius plucked a copy of A Beginner's Guide to Transformation from Ginny's Cauldron, examined it briefly, and then replaced it. No one at that time realized how much of an effect this gesture from Lucius Malfoy would have on their lives. And they all left the shop, none the wiser. They found the car in Charing Cross Road, and after making it invisible, flew it into the sky over London. They saw the Hogwarts Express far below and followed it for some time. That's what we're going to be doing in part three, people. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much what we're going to be doing in part three. So yeah. <laughs> but 
to anywhere. Looks like we've lost the train. Let's check out that tunnel. Looks like we found the train, Ron. Try not to scratch the paintwork, or my dad will kill me. We're going to be doing all that in part three, so, uh, yep, this, that's going to be that, pretty much that for now. This is Mr. Crazy Game 13 saying word out. Join me in part three whenever we do the, uh, flying car section of the game. The only time we, know we have a ride in it.